Dallas Cowboys all pro guard Zach Martin speculates that he could retire after the 2024 season. Do the Dallas Cowboys have a transition plan ready? All that and more in this episode of the Lot Dom Cowboys Podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your daily Dallas Cowboys podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by GameTime. Download the GameTime app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today, as always, is Lena McCool. You can follow him on Twitter at McCoolBCB. On today's show, we are breaking down day one of mandatory minicamp for the Dallas Cowboys. We've got lots of news and nuggets to get through. Through, I mean, probably the biggest story that we had, Landon, coming out of Tuesday was that Zach Martin clearly is considering retirement after the 2024 season. Uh, first and foremost, does that surprise you? I mean, it it shouldn't. I mean, it kind of does. It kind of did when it, when it, when it came out, but it shouldn't. I mean, he's thirty four years old, I think, and yeah. and you know, yeah. he just he's he's coming near the end of another extension that he's done. Um, you know, these guys can play for a really really long time, and uh, uh, and and the good ones usually do. Uh, but I, I I you know I think it's still thirty four years old, and he's still playing in the NFL against guys that are sometimes. 12 years younger than him and, and, uh, and, 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 you know, ready to come after him because uh, he's got a huge target. When you're, whenever you're a hall of famer, like everybody's trying to be, give you their very best. So he's been taking the NFL's best for the last, you know, 12 or 13 years or whatever it is. So um, I guess in the sense that, you know, he's older and it's, you know, around the time that we start having these conversations, I'm not surprised, but in the sense that, it still feels like he's got a, a lot of really good football left. It, it it is a little bit surprising just because you know there was definitely a time when when he had a knee thing at the end and he kind of wasn't quite the same. But I, you know, at, in the aggregate of the last few years, it doesn't really feel like Zach Martin has fallen off too much. So when Zach Martin signed the the, the contract extension last was it during training camp last year yeah. when he was holding out, yeah. I think. Everybody knew that it's very likely that he'll retire after the 2024 season. He would be 35 years old at that point. Like, I think we all knew that, but to hear Zach Martin it talk is, about yeah. it, it's different, yeah. right? It, it's it the, the first feeling was like a sinking feeling in my stomach. Mm. Like, oh no, this is, this is really it. Um, but I think a lot of us knew that already. Now there's, there's some other things going on here that I think we should talk about. Number one, the contract. Yeah, he does not have a deal after the 2025 season. So I'm wondering, Landon, I'm wondering out loud. <laughs> I, maybe the Cowboys know, like maybe they know that this is Zach Martin's last year. That's why there hasn't been a, a, a push to get him to sign maybe another extension this offseason. Maybe they know. I think it's also worth pointing out that Zach Martin, oh, listen, if you follow him on Instagram, you know this. This, is, this isn't breaking news, but he is building a giant mansion in indiana where he's from uh where he went to school uh, at notre dame right so yeah. he's he's got a wife i think he's got a child on the way or they already had one they already um, had one i think time yeah. to be a family man right and mm -hmm. i think nfl players we saw like maybe in the 80s and 90s they had to play a little bit longer to kind of build up the the wealth needed for the rest of their, their lives it's just not the case for nfl players anymore like zach martin has all the money he needs he could retire after what would be 10 years 11 years and go on with the rest of his life. Yeah, and, and you know, I think, and in, and in, in what the implication there is that you know, maybe if he doesn't retire, maybe there's a, a chance that he does a, a year or two stint with the Colts, right? Or he's or there. he's looking yep. to get a little bit closer to home, right? So, uh, I do think that you know, all of these kind of again, what what do we do? We read tea leaves here, and 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 the tea leaves here seem to indicate that there is some sort of change potentially coming for Zach beyond the end of the season whether this is all a ploy to leverage the cowboys into one more contract That'd be or <laughs> which 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 it could be uh or or it's it's you know a serious talk about uh uh retirement i do think that there is not the chance that <laughs> you know frankly 
much like a lot of players on this team uh, and a lot of things in this team that it, this Cowboys offensive line and uh, could be very different next year without Zach Martin. And we talked about this, I believe it was a week ago, looking at the offensive line, how much change could happen here basically yeah. over the next or over the previous 12 months and over the next 12 months. Yeah. Um, let's assume the Cowboys are planning on letting Zach Martin leave and or Zach Martin retiring, right? Mm-hmm. What's the plan in 2025 and beyond? Because they got to believe part of it is they just feel like they've got to go a little bit cheaper on the offensive line. They've spent so much money on their offensive line over the last decade that maybe now it's time where you're only paying one or two offensive linemen second contracts. Yeah, I mean, you know, look, the solving the Zach Martin problem is going to come on the other side of, you know, hopefully a, a, a CD Lamb contract, you know, potentially moving towards a Mike Parsons contract. And then by the time that it's time to figure out Zach Martin, I think we'll have an answer on exactly what what's going on with Dak's contract as well. So, uh, yeah, and I would imagine that that the, after signing all those contracts with all those other players, that the solution to the Zach Martin, you know, hole is is to fill within and and, and to promote a TJ Bass or to move over Cooper Beebe and, and have Brock Hoffman play center or, you know, I think they feel really good right now about the depth that's that's on that offensive line and how many young good players they have there. Uh, but that you know those numbers kind of change when you lose your your Hall of Fame guard uh, right guard uh, mm-hmm. after the season. So, but I think it 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 evens out, right? Like suddenly you don't have extra depth; you've got just amount <laughs> the right amount of depth. Right amount. And and again, I think this also explains a little bit maybe why we're seeing some of Awesome Richards take some snaps at guard during OTAs and not just tackle. It's, it's just to kind of get several different Nathan Thomas getting drafted, right? I think all of this kind of points towards the Cowboys trying to get ready to, uh, you know, make this transition uh, from in, losing Tyron Smith and uh, Zach Martin in a matter of two years in order to do that, you know, you, you're going to need to spam the position a little bit to make sure that you have the quality that you'll need just to get it to a, a basic level. That's certainly not to the level of, replacing Zach Martin or Tyron Smith. So in an ideal world, what does this offensive line look like in 2025 if Zach Martin does leave? For you, is it Cooper Beebe at center and TJ Bass at right guard? Do you draft somebody? Do you move Beebe over? What do you think? I think Bass at right guard just makes the most sense, right? I, I mean, I, I I know Brock Hoffman's been getting a lot of play, and he's right now you know, taking first you know team center snaps, but – it just makes more sense to get Cooper BB in at center this year uh, and then keep him there, you know? And, and, and frankly, I mean, if you're giving me the choice between who would I rather have me personally, TJ Bass at right guard or Brock Hoffman at center and Cooper BB being the, the guy to make it work. Yeah. I would rather have TJ Bass at right guard. And, and I think, you know, and, and I also think that beyond that too, I think that's the position that guard is the, easier position to fill certainly not the shoes right zach barton is is the is a difficult player to replace but i think that you have more options and better options at guard to replace there than if you're trying to move cooper bb out there and then replace him with either hoffman playing center or a a tj bass playing center which i like i said i prefer him at guard it's clear that the Cowboys are certainly getting ready for this possibility. They should also get ready for it in the 2024 season. We saw Zach Martin miss some time last year, which was yeah. really the only second time in his career that he wasn't fully healthy. It seems like they're covering their bases here, but I I would assume as we go into this year that this is probably the last year of Zach Martin wearing a Cowboys jersey. It just makes me sad, Landon. That's all. He's one of my yeah. favorite players. I got his jersey hanging on or hanging up right behind me. Uh, it's it's going to bum me out. Absolutely. I mean, especially a year after losing Ty- Tyron, it's like, you know, th- that those guys obviously were stalwarts of this team, not only the offensive line, but this team, you know, for, yeah. for a decade plus. So, uh, yeah, to see, you know, these kind of transitions are hard and, and it's always tough. Um, and it, it, you hate to see great players kind of that you're, especially offensive linemen is it, they, they're with us for so long and, and you I just know. kind of, you forget about them or, or, or at least the general public kind of forgets about them. So it's like this, this feeling that they'll always be there. So it, it seems always especially tough whenever like a long time, great lineman retires because it's, you, you just, you come to c- count on that consistency and on that great yeah. play and, and then you miss them when they're gone. 
All right, let's talk about Micah Parsons, who spoke to the media on Tuesday, and boy, did he ever. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time makes getting NBA Finals tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that it gets to tip off with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying NBA tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying tickets uh, last minute for sports concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. Save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. And you can save even more when you choose a section and you let game time choose your exact seats. Take the guesswork out of buying NBA Finals tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem promo code locked on NFL for $20 off your first purchase. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? Are you having to turn down the volume with all that shouting? Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24 7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all that screaming locked on sports today brings you can't miss analysis opinions and news streaming 24 7 on youtube or on the free amazon fire tv channels app part of the locked on podcast network your team every day all right later let's talk about michael parsons who got in front of some microphones yesterday and talked yeah. for a while uh I want you to go first because I, I I want your thoughts. What did you think of Micah Parsons' comments? And I'll, I'll I'll get into some of those comments in a second. Well, I think first things first is that it's always important to watch the video on this stuff, right? You like, yes. I, I think I think reading the transcripts, I was like, wow. I, I have I have him here. I'll, I'll yeah, read, let, I'll you, you read some of it real quick. Go One ahead. of these is from this is courtesy of Michael Galkin. This is Micah yeah. Parsons talking about Mike Zimmer. He said. Honestly, me and Zim haven't probably said a total of 20 words to each other. He's a very quiet person. All I keep hearing from the coaches is, is Zim likes it this way. I was like, well, I like it this way. So I can't wait to have my true sit down with him. I think it'll be pretty cool because obviously old school mindset, old school mentality. I think he's had a lot of great players, but he ain't ever had a Micah Parsons before. It'll be fun. And I think it's going to be unique. There's a lot of similarities on things on how he, how Dan used me and how Zim will use me, but he has more twists and turns and how he's going to set things up. Also, there are some things that I've got to get used to. It's going to be a compromisable relationship. There's going to be things like I'm not going to give on. I don't give on. That's part of the regime, you know? Okay. So now there's two ways to read that, right? There's the actual way that Micah Parsons said it, right? And, I, and again, even I, I'm not going to convey this very well. So I encourage all of you to go actually listen to the way Micah Parsons answered this question, right? Because when he answers it, it 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 it, it doesn't sound nearly as egotistical or as uh, problematic. I guess is probably the best way to phrase it, as it sounds on paper. On paper, it sounds like I'm hearing To's voice say this, right? And 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 he's talking about Bill Parcells, right? So. But that doesn't that isn't necessarily what the video what the video kind of shows. The video kind of shows they asked him a question about Zimmer. And to me, that we haven't spoken 23 words to each other or 20 words to each other or whatever. Like that was a lot less damning when you watch it on video because yeah. he was talking about on the field. He's like, Yeah, you know, we haven't even said that much to each other. But I think what he's was suggesting is that they're working together, but they haven't had a ton of back and forth, which yeah. I don't know is necessarily as damning as I'm not because it sounds like I'm not talking to that. Yeah, we're not, we're, we're not talking. We're just, we're not there. speaking, yeah. which is yeah. not the case. Like, yeah. I think what he's saying is, Oh, we, just, we, we haven't chatted a ton. We, we've been on the field and doing stuff. And I also think that the, the one that were really like, I was like, Micah was, was when we read it was the, he hasn't ever played with a uh, Micah Parsons before, but when he, when he says it, he has like a gleam in his eye. And, and I think what he's talking, he specifically is saying is, he hasn't had a, a piece like this before. I, the problem is, is that, and, and this is something that obviously I recognize, right? 
he's a podcaster, <laughs> you know? And he, so he has he's one of us. He's one of us. One <laughs> of us. He has <laughs> takes, you know, he has, uh, 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 you know, a lot of these guys, you ask them questions about what else is going on the team. They don't care. They don't have a take on what's happening about like how much. Oh, uh, I, I don't, I don't know what CD's going to make. I don't care. So, Michael Parsons is out here going, CD Lamb needs to make $36 million <laughs> you know, a year next year. And it's like, that to me is the difference here is that Micah is just, and this is, I think this is a little bit naive on Micah's part. I think that's, that's, that's the issue here is that what Micah, I don't think realizes, or maybe he does. And, and I'm being too old school about it is that he's setting himself up with this, right? He, he, he set himself up with, with, with the whole, you know, issue of leadership and uh you know not being at otas and and frankly with the media kind of coming after him uh, not coming after him but talking to him about that stuff he set all that up by saying hey to cd i, I want to be a leader we got to show the players this we've we've covered all this so you know what i'm talking about but you know that's that was a, a media a, you know target practice of his own creation he put that out there on himself and now the media is kind of coming after him a little bit. Say, hey, you said that you're not going to be here at OTAs. Meanwhile, this is the this pattern of skipping that week of OTAs and showing up for the mini camp, mandatory mini camp. That's what that's what Parsons done has done the last two years. So nothing has really changed in that sense, except for the fact that he said that he was going to be a leader on a podcast. Now the rest of it, I think he was asked his opinion, and as opposed to. I don't know, 85% of these players that that answer these questions, he didn't try to just spin his way out of the question. Like he legitimately answered how he felt about some of this stuff. But of course, you know, it's going to be trans, it's it's just gonna be read wrong. It's just gonna, it's gonna hit people's ears incorrectly. But I, that's why I I strongly encourage to to watch the video because I think his tone and the way he's speaking is very matter of factly he's not he's not being a braggart he's not being like uh uh not too much a little bit maybe but not but not like not as it comes off right i think he's legitimately saying hey this is going to be a relationship and even with the stuff he said about the about training camp and about remembering the titans it's like hey this is the stuff we did before like they're still gonna we're gonna spend a month and that's the other thing that came out like they're spending a month in oxnard this year yeah they're gonna have plenty of time yeah, great news for me. They're gonna have plenty of time for for you know building chemistry and all that Kubaya stuff. Kubaya moments, yeah, yeah. And so I think that because Micah hasn't been here, because Micah made all those comments, this stuff that he said is going to be blown up in a lot of ways. But but in reality, I don't know that it's very controversial, and it certainly doesn't feel. I mean, again, as someone who was around for the To Bill Parcells relationship. It certainly doesn't feel as anything as contentious as that or, or, so, or anything contentious. So yesterday, uh, I wasn't able to be at my uh, computer. I would say I wasn't at practice. So I was only getting tweets from another event that I was at. And if you're just like, really quickly scrolling oh, through Twitter yeah. and you see this pop up, you're thinking, oh, no, Micah, Micah, what did you do? What did This yeah. sounds bad. And I was honest, I was ready to lead the show today with like, okay, do the Cowboys have a problem on their hands? With Micah Parsons, I didn't get to watch the video of Micah talking until this morning, mm-hmm. and then I watched and I'm like, oh, okay, all right, this is this is totally different. Do you know what this yeah. sounds like? This sounds like Jerry Jones talking to make sure yeah. that yeah. it makes sure that yeah. Micah Parsons is leading first take and undisputed as the first segment when they're not even practicing yet with in pads, right? Like yeah. Micah Parsons is like. So he really is a great podcaster. He's got people talking about it without actually talking about anything he's doing on the field. And, and that, that's why I'm saying, I, and that's why I'm saying that I may be old school because honestly, maybe this isn't a problem. Maybe this is all by design. Maybe yeah. he's doing this to get on first take. Maybe you know because honestly, it, it's it's benign enough that it's not really going to be held against him, but it's sensational enough that hey, everybody's going to talk about it, what he what the quotes it, are. It's not it, it's not going to get held against him, and it's once the games start everybody is going to forget about any of these comments. And I think once we even get to training camp, but it's a great way to make sure people are talking about you in June. Now, I also want to clarify. I don't think Micah did this just to get people talking about him. Because I think, honestly, when you watch the clip, and please go check it out on DallasCowboys.com, you can see the way his tone and his demeanor was very relaxed. Yeah, Almost like kind of joking with the, the, the reporters are there. 
but when you see it in text form, it looks a lot worse than it is. It to <laughs> me, honestly, just from an outsider, it seemed like Micah's his tone to me felt like he's excited to work with them. He just hasn't had the chance to sit yeah. down with him one on one yet. And that's really what it comes back to. Yeah, I mean, the question was basically again, and that's what's kind of weird is that the question was starting out more as a hey, what have you done to kind of get ready for this defense since you haven't been in all the OTAs? And he started talking about, you know, talking to Paul Gunther and 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 uh, getting ready for that sort of thing. And then someone asked about, have you had meetings with Zim and all that stuff? And he, and he starts talking about working on the field. And then he's like, yeah, we haven't said, and he kind of just offhand and says, we haven't spoken a lot to each other. But again, it's like, this is tough, right? Like this yeah. is a, this is a tough, this is a tough quote to kind of put out there. But I, 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 yeah, look, I, I don't, again, if you just listen to the way he's speaking, he doesn't seem to be upset or like, you know, angry or, or, you know, contention. It feels like there's any contention. And, 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 and even at the back end of that quote, he talked, even though he's talking about, there's going to be ways that I want to do it. He's talking about compromise. He's talking about compromising with the coach and being willing, more than willing to compromise with the coach yeah. on some of this stuff. Yeah. So. Uh, that that to me sounds like a player is willing to work. With Either Micah is naive about the Dallas Cowboys media and the national media, or he is the ultimate content king. Yeah. I think it might be more of it. It might be the latter. It might be the latter. I don't know. I haven't uh, decided yet. All right, let's get to some more news and notes from Dallas Cowboys mandatory minicamp next. This episode is brought to you by Better Help. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who's unbiased in your life. So today I want to tell you how I really feel about something. And you might even be thinking the same thing this week. Why do we have to wait so long for this NBA Finals? It feels like it's been forever since the conference finals have ended and we've had to wait like a week. Come on, NBA, get this fixed. We're all so excited to watch our Mavs against the Celtics uh, for the next two weeks. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun, but this this is just it's killing me waiting this long. Therapy can be different for everybody. I feel much better now that I got that that off my chest, and I know most of us have much bigger problems than our favorite sports teams, and it's important to talk about it every once in a while. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and convenient and suited to your schedule. So just visit betterhelp.com slash locked on to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash locked on. Welcome back to the Locked On Cowboys podcast. We are discussing the latest notes uh, and nuggets from Dallas Cowboys mandatory minicamp. Elaine, let's do some injury stuff because yep. Mike McCarthy actually gave us some good updates. Um, we saw Trayvon Diggs working with the, the cords. I uh, said the, the ACL recovery is going really well. He might start the training camp process on PUP, but it's pretty yeah. clear he's going to be ready for week one. Overshawn, potentially the same thing. He might be a little bit further along. And then we had Peyton Hendershot, who did not practice because of a minor medical procedure. Uh, what are your biggest thoughts or takeaways from the injury report? You know, it's good to hear more and more positive reports about the, the ACL folks, right? We didn't hear anything about Stevens or uh, some of the down roster guys, but I'm I'm sure they're probably on similar timelines as Overshone, mm-hmm. um, or maybe you know somewhere between Overshone and, and Diggs. Um, and uh, you know, I, I obviously Diggs had had his injury just a little bit behind Overshone. His was in week two, if I'm not mistaken, or was it week one? I can't remember. It was two early of the preseason. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. The preseason. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so it, 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 you know, but having have happened just a little bit after Overshone and all of them. So I, I think that, you know, it's, it's good that I think it's good that, that they start, you know, especially uh, digs on pub. I, I, you know, it's just, there's no reason to rush him back on this stuff. Right. And we know what he can do. It's not like his role is going to change a ton in this new defense or, or if it does, it's in a way that he's going to be familiar with. So the, the most important thing is to make sure that he's healthy. And that he's ready to kind of come back, and th- there won't be any setbacks. I, I think for Overshone, you know, it's uh, it's a little more important that he gets back s- sooner than later, simply because he didn't, you know, he obviously missed all of last year. Uh, the training camp was was fantastic, but you know, now that there's a new defense, and and specifically how different the things are going to be for the defense uh, for the linebackers, uh, I, I think it's it's at least good for him to be out there, even if he can't 
be in some of those drills just to be on the field and to be able to take mental reps and you know even on some of the walkthrough stuff if he's able to kind of get in and at least work his mind uh, in while you know functioning inside of a Zimmer defense that's going to get him prepped for when training camp actually rolls around and it's actually time to put on pads he's not going to be also playing catch up uh, while trying to rehab, while trying to learn a new defense, you know, it's just, it can build up. Like if you don't, if you don't kind of, kind of keep constantly at it, suddenly you, you can get to the end of this and you're still having to do all your rehab, also learn a new defense and, you know, you know, kind of execute all of that on the field while competing for a spot. It's, it's a lot for a young player. So uh, if he can get out there earlier, I think it just kind of helps even things out for him so that it becomes second nature by the time it's time to compete. Uh, Cause you're going to need overshone overshone is a guy that I think you're really relying on to be uh, uh, you know, a main contributor on defense uh, uh, on the deep on the linebacker crew opposite of Kendrick. So uh, I think it's really important that, the sooner he gets back, the more reps he gets earlier, the more comfortable he can be. And then once the real work begins, he's not also trying to overthink and figure things out because he's got it all down pat. Uh, another note that I forgot, uh, CJ Goodwin fully participated yes. in practice on Tuesday, back on the field on Wednesday. Um, I think with the changing kickoff rules, I think his role is going to be even more important than it's yes. ever been. Um, he's been one of the NFL's best gunners for a long time now. So I know when we talk about the kickoff rules, we really only talk about like the returners and the blockers, but I think having more players with sideline to sideline speed like him that can tackle really well is important. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, a guy that the Cowboys really missed last year. And, and I think any look really what they did with this, with this kickoff rule is they just, remade two of the kick uh, special teams units important again, right? Like mm -hmm. basically what they had done previously was just take all the teeth out of the kickoff and kickoff return units. There was basically almost no use for them. Right. Uh, but now suddenly th those become useful uh, or, or used uh, 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 units. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and because uh, he's on every single special teams unit as a returner or, or as a blocker, uh, he's going to, that means that Goodwin's role is obviously <laughs> increased back to where it was pre 20, what was it? 2021 20, rule change. So um, I, I think, yeah, it's, it's great to have him back. Uh, he's probably one of the fastest players on the team, even after the ACL injury and even still after being whatever he is, 30, almost 30 years old. Uh, and I think he, he is going to be e even more useful than he would have been last year, just simply because there's more reps for him to be impactful on, uh, and, and two more units that suddenly have become relevant again with this new rule change. So for the most part, it seems like the Cowboys are pretty healthy going into minicamp, knock on wood, right, and knocking as hard as I can. Uh, the big ones to watch out for are Diggs and Overshone. I saw a, a picture of John Stevens. It seems like he's pretty close to getting back yeah. on the field. Uh, I believe it was Mike McCarthy mentioned him either yesterday or today. Um, he is expected to be ready to go. Uh, by the first practice of training camp. So uh, all things go for Stevens, who we're really excited about. I got to say, I mean, it, you know, I'm sure it's obviously necessary, but Hendershot needs to really be careful here, man. <laughs> like yeah. he he can't be missing any more practices or, or you know, mini camp stuff because, I mean, obviously he needed this if it's surgery of some sort, but he's got to be watching his back. I mean, it, 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 it I, you know, there was times when we got shocked that he was on the team last year because of all the competition. Now you add in, you know, the Bryce Ford, you add in uh, uh, Stevens back is healthy. Suddenly his spot not only doesn't look secure, it looks very much in peril. So he's a guy that is definitely going to need to get on his horse when it comes to training yeah. camp, start making plays again, if he wants to make it onto this roster. All right, that is it for today's show. We want to thank you for making Laton Cowboys your first listen every single day. Go check out the channel on YouTube. We post videos every day over there. Go download the podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, on tomorrow's show, we're going to break down more news and nuggets from Dallas Cowboys minicamp. So, again, check that out when it publishes. We're probably right around 2 p.m. Eastern time. Go follow Landon on Twitter at McCoolBCB. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosier, and we will see you right back here tomorrow.